All right, this is uh, Helix Paleo Labs. This is where I had my uh, DNA test done. I had three of them done there, and they sent them out to um, Eaton Bio Labs for further analysis, apparently. But this is this is um, their uh, that's what they do. That's that's their uh, function, and this is the um, the results and information. And uh, this was three of them. There's a 36 inch fingertip, 36 inches wide or deep. Uh, a lung, which was a normal size, and a mud finger tip, which was about a 60 foot expected creature. Uh, the 36 inch one would have been approximately somewhere around 200 feet, I was estimating, maybe a smidge more. Now, they did the ancient DNA extraction, this and that, and all the different tests, and uh, you know, uh, negative controls, and uh, you know, very, very, and it took months to do this. And I'm going to just give you, and you know, these are all the information about it, and then it comes to see in here, right? Look at this Homo sapien mitochondrial DNA, cytochrome B, D loop, and um, so forth. But 100%, and I asked him, you know, how close was it? He said, absolutely 100%. So it goes down through here and it shows all this information, and the results are certified. So that's what I'm showing you here, and now let's look at uh, something else. All right, now I taped Tom when I talked to him. He's a lab director at uh, Helix Paleo Labs, and um, I was just rolling some stuff of, of stones and rocks and different uh, microscopic shots and all kinds of stuff that I have here. So I'm going to let him explain to you what I just talked to about the DNA. Certain amount, you can only get a certain amount of base pairs normally. Right, usually 100 to 200 tops because the DNA is so fragmented because of just the, you know, the degradation, you know, with all the uh, DNA you know, testing, and, you know, wear and tear and things like that. Yeah. But I was able to, you know, locate these primers that were in that paper that uh, this group had had success with, and that seemed like the best option. And the, you know, our, uh, mitochondrial DNA primer that will essentially amplify all types of vertebrate so you know not just human but any kind of kind of vertebrate life form and uh, so they were sort of a universal type of fit for these samples because we don't know obviously what the samples consist of so the you know the sequence that came back and it was roughly you know for each of these fragments about 100 base pairs match them up in the uh, database and they match with the you know the human mitochondrial there's two regions of the mitochondria, Gold. one is called the D, like the letter D is in dog, the D loop, and then the other one I believe is for cytochrome B gene. Uh, the mitochondria has several different genes that it uh, consists of, but these uh, these primers were specific for those areas of the mitochondrial genome. So um, yeah, so I you know it, you know considering where we you know started a couple months ago, that's uh, you know. Those are nice results to have. Yeah, that's kind of amazing. The PCR and, and now the DNA sequencing. So. Wow. And um, how how refined down is this? I mean, it's in the in the human genome family, meaning it's not a a, a monkey or a primate. I mean, it's a primate, but how refined right, it is. Exactly. Yeah. Now in the database, it's showing you know for that region of sequence that I attained for these fragments. You know, that they match up with, you know, 100% identity to, you know, the human mitochondrial genome, again, the D-loop, and I, I believe the other region was... Alright, there's no sense of going any further. Oh, by the way, this is, um precursor to mud fossilization which I did in, in my little shop here uh, and what I used is um, silicates and you know sandy soils and so forth in a, uh, a chicken tissue in that medium with 12 volts applied to it in, uh, and I did several different tests and I had them going positive and negative polarities and so forth through the bones and through the tissue and 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 it it what it does it literally does electrolysis to the skin because the skin is has 50 times more silicon in your skin than in the rest of your body so your your your, your connective tissues and so forth has some but not nothing like your skin uh, it's your it saves you and it's a wear and tear against the, the uh, against the world and it does this this was about three four months maybe tops and this is the 
uh, tendinous material. It's a white and it, it, it has stuff. Once it gets done, it is, it never goes away. And the earth is literally made of it. It's limestone. All right, so that's what you're going to see here. Now, that shows you that I do have these tests. Now, I'm going to show you a little more to prove what I'm saying, and then hopefully you'll understand that I'm serious, and I do have some abilities here. I'm going to show you some of my papers, not to impress you, just to show you that I do have some background. Hold on one second. All right, if you want to go up to my website, it's mudfossilswithans.com, and if you scroll down just a smidge over here on the left and click that, it brings you to the... Um, um, DNA reports. All right, now the the guy that really I give a ton of my respect to and my appreciation to is Jesse Garan. All right, uh, hold on a second, Jesse Garan, who donated his services, and I'm talking about services that you oh, oh, it's absolutely phenomenal. Wait to see what these people do. They scan industrial equipment, metal, racing engines, prefabricated things, the new, um, what do you call it, those new, um, the, the jets that make their things all one piece. Once they're done, they can't tell what's in there. They can find out, just you can tell them, dimensions, uh, sizes, thickness, porosities. And they did seven CAT scans for us in the in the interest of science free I was going to pay him I tried to, to, to find the best people and I found them and then when I told them what I was about they donated it because it was out of my own pocket I'm paying for it and I won't, won't accept any money from anyone I'll accept help you know I would, I'd love to have some tools and things to do things I don't have a lot of things but you know or some tests would be great I mean anybody can help in that and, and get the word out to other people I don't want any money I, I have no clue uh, no way of, of thinking about money at all on this. I don't want money and I never will accept any money. So that's not my my uh, impetus here. Anyway, I had the best people in the world working on this. Gil Headley, who owns his own autopsy school and teaches autopsies throughout the world and is well respected and is very gifted, I can tell you that right now. And uh, he teaches everything, and he's got a, a, for courses on fascia and everything where people didn't understand any of this stuff. And he understands this so intimately, and the, the chemistry of the body, and what areas of the body dull the blades of his scalpel when he's cutting through these things. And he, can, he told me about how the tendons are actually almost like guitar strings. They can twang. They're literally made of stone. This is true. I mean, of cal CaCO3, calcium carbonate, and you know some other minerals and things in there. But they're primarily made of a limestone, and they're uh, they're in a flexible um, architecture where they can squish around with each other, and then they're coated with fascia. And uh, I spent a lot of time. Well, I didn't spend a lot of time with Gil, but I spent a lot of time with his videos on autopsies. And I understand the death process quite well. I understand the body structure and the anatomy extremely well and I owe him a great debt of thanks because he also donated his time all right so these are things I'd like to say and I have said so thank you to all that were helpful and hopefully we can have some other help from academia but that has not happened with all this evidence they've turned their backs on this so now it has to be we have to just stand up and say it's not. You can't do that. You just can't do that. It's not right. So I'm hoping you people will do that because I can't do it. They're not paying attention to me. They've got me on blacklists and spam, academic spam lists and all kinds of things. And this is not, not no response to anybody in the whole world. The only response is that they have finally decided that yes, there is mud can have DNA and they they, they will they dismiss the fossils and they just say oh mud is where the DNA is. They, they found nothing. They are too proud to do their job, and it's time to stop it, all right? It's all about them now. It's not about the students. It's not about us. It's about them, and, and it's not about them. So let's reverse this. We can do it. We just say, no, what is this? Pay attention to this. What do you have to say? All right? Mud Fossil University. Facts that cannot be rationally denied. 
And if that is true, that means the person that turns away from that is delusional. Alright? They're delusional or they have some ulterior motive that is not good. That's all I have to say. Alright, I want to get this information out and uh, anyone is free to download this and display it and share it and please do as much as you can. I don't want my research involved with anyone else's theories of anything, conspiracies, 9-11, flat earth, none of that stuff applies to me whatsoever. Now, I would like you to just let me know that you're using it and, and, and tip me off to where it is and at Roger at mudfossils.com. That's my website. I set it up years ago for this because uh, I discovered this and, and no one would assist. So um, this is the website right here. Uh, I'm sorry, this is the uh, Mud Fossils original research group. Whoops, I'm sorry, let me back out of where you can see it. Alright, here you are, Mud Fossils original research group. This is on Facebook. Mud Fossils Revel is oops. I'm going to uh, leave this page, and Mud Fossil uh, Revelations is, uh, and that is truly a, an actual uh, skull from a um, Draco Rex. So this is the meaning of Mud Fossils, and I also have Science Theory Challenge where we show, like this is accelerated light. We uh, have so much stuff that is, is against what, what is being forced on kids. It's forced. Forced theories at institutions are really criminal. They don't have the back, back up to, uh, to um, support this stuff that they're teaching. And I do, and they refuse to see it. So to me, that's fiduciary failure. So this is where you should go and look about that. And we also have this one here, which is Mud Fossil University. The other sites are in support of Mud Fossil University, and we have hundreds of videos up here. And they're all material support. Nothing here that's just guesses and silly little thinking, oh, it might, must be this and it must be that, and evolution and big bangs happened and all this business. If you think you evolved from dead dust that banged together accidentally and ended up with us, that's insanity. The weakest of minds on the planet came up with that. And then they force it on kids. And then they destroy them if they don't say it back. So we're going to change that. All right? Go to these sites and share my videos. Please share all of this stuff. Make sure that everyone you know understands this. Don't walk away from them. Don't hide. Don't let them intimidate you. Don't let them bully you. I've been doing this for years and being bullied for years. Don't take it. 